Hey, how's it going? Ding, 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 ding. It's nine o'clock. Which means welcome back to the pickup line with it does. me. Who's me, going first? Me or you? You. You go. I'm Hannah Vaughn. I'm Ethan Michael. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's the pickup line. And, and uh, we're going to talk about sex positivity and get a little slutty tonight. If you want to call in, if any of the, the topic or the, the things we say interest you or you want to jump in, 951-364-2430. No. Wait, that is it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And if you notice, the title of the episode is Let's Get Slutty and Sex Positivity. But just know, we are not using Let's Get Slutty in a demeaning way. It is a positive way. Yeah. We talked about this with with Dr. Daryl Ray that I think he proudly goes like he he owns the title when he's, he's proud of it. He's like, yeah, I'm a slut. Are you a slut, Hannah? And I was like... Oh yeah, <laughs> we, we should have invited him on again. I didn't think I of that. I wanted to have him back. That was so much fun. We're gonna what? see him on the fourth. Yes, we are. Wait, what is the fourth, Hannah? What's the fourth? Are we doing a stream? Are we? Yeah, we're doing a fundraiser. <laughs> yes, we're doing a fundraiser for recovering uh, from religion, which I'll show the ad later on. Okay. It's okay. also a special day. And why is that, Ethan? Oh, yeah. It's the one year anniversary of your friendly neighborhood atheist, the channel. So, Woo! dude, I can't believe it's been a whole year. That is just almost a year. We're almost there, like th- two and a half, three weeks away. It's mm-hmm. why it really is. I still remember my first video was like a WebEx debate with a Christian. It was so, it was so bad. And it will never. Uh, well, it most likely will never see the light of day um, because I don't think I, I can access it anymore. But it was a, oh my God, it was so bad. Like I was all, you know, I watch and talk heathen and, and AXP. So I'm like, I've got this all like, and then before I was just like a face plant. Like he was just like, what about this? What about this? And I'm like, so it's not no. as, easy as, as, as like Eric Murphy makes it look. It's a lot harder than that. <laughs> so do you want to talk about what you did last weekend? Wait, what did I do last weekend? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Are you being serious? No, no, I'm totally kidding. Yes. Oh, I'm speaking I, of milestones. I know. I got to co-host Talk Heathen with none other than Eric Murphy. And that was oh, like you're in the chat. You could have seen like if you watch watch it back, you could see the excitement uh, on my face. Like I'm and nervous. I'm just like, oh my God, what do I do? Don't screw this up, dude. Don't screw this up. Like <laughs> You did great. You were so giddy and it was wonderful and you did great. It was it was so much fun. I had a blast and it's like I never thought I would do that. So hell yeah, talk about goals for 2021 or starting off 2021 right. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good so far, I think. Good things are happening. <laughs> I didn't think about it. I'm like yeah, it's a year. Things are happening. We do have a caller, but before we get to our caller, okay, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, it has been a good... Oh, yeah. Speaking of sex positivity, for those that don't know, check out what I bought. So I bought like this this gold hat. <laughs> oh, this next part is part of my fault. And I, I bought these little gold booty shorts. And I, I, I took it down from Twitter, but I did post it on my personal Facebook. I was in uh, just in these shorts and the gold hat. And I was like, I was so excited about it. And you're like, I'm going to use that for, you know, our promo post for tonight's episode, because we're talking about, you know, getting slutty, sex positivity. And there you are with your freaking bulge out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know, it's funny. I would have never done that like years ago. I, cause I'm like, Again, very conservative. Like I can barely say the word masturbate. Like <laughs> <laughs> took you a couple. You had to like rev yourself up for that one. It did it's that it's that 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 conservative uh, indoctrination I've had that like stops you from talking about it. But well, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Steps are being made. You posted it and then you took it down, but it's still on Facebook. So if you want to see Ethan in some bright gold metallic booty shorts uh 
shirt and just a hat. Yeah. No shirt, just the ha- and the matching hat. It's on his Facebook right now. It is, but you're. Uh, uh, it, it's not public, so you have to be Facebook friends with me. Oh, and- just kidding. If you're friends with him, you can go see it. <laughs> Thank you, Eric Murphy. I I appreciate that. I've seen some of the comments, and I'm just like, I'm I'm, I'm really blown away by like the support, and I've gotten messages, and I've gotten subscribers, and I'm just like. Like, this is so, so cool and new to me. It's. You deserve it, buddy. It's just, I I just go back to thinking about like when everything was so bad for so many years and I thought I had nothing left to live for. And now like things are so good. Dude, I actually one night thought I trigger warning. I actually thought I was going to die one night because my health was just so bad that I grabbed a sheet of paper. It was like two in the morning and I started writing notes to all the people I cared about and I folded them up and I put them in my drawer uh, somewhere where I knew my, my, uh, my wife at the time would find them. Um, I found them when I moved out and I bawled my eyes out. I totally forgot about them, but I I didn't think I was going to wake up the next day. And at that point I was, okay with it because of how bad my health was and how bad my mental health was. It was just like, well, I think it's time. It's it's so weird, man. And I'm then so shit, glad you're still here. And shit like this happens and it's like, wow, this is not the life I expected to live. But holy crap, am I grateful? I am too. But that's not the topic. Let's get this. I'm back. a survivor. I'm gonna make it. Gonna get slutty. Let's take the collar. <laughs> for for any watching, uh, trigger warning. We don't have a call screener yet, so anything can get said. I think this name is Millie Tello. Okay. Hey, yes, yes. My, my name is Lela Tella. I am calling from Greece. Hello. Mm-hmm. I, I I wanted uh, to talk about sex positivity, but also I, I wanted to share my experience. Uh, I am I am a Greek boy, but I I am uh, homosexual, and I have been brought up in a country where my parents they are both uh, Christians and they take their religion very seriously. And okay. When I grow up, they are calling me. A... Okay. I I, you know, I kind of felt that one coming. I'm really sorry, guys. We don't have a screener. I didn't want to. I didn't want to judge. I'm I like, know. I was like, I'm really feeling for this. Per- sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was like, this accent doesn't sound right. Um, well, uh, the guy, well, the person wasn't too bright because uh, they didn't block out their caller ID. Should we call them back? No. <laughs> if, if I was an asshole. I would blast their number right now for acting like that and their real name since it shows up on the caller ID. What should we do, guys? What should we do with this information? Let us know. I am not as shitty as that caller, and I would never do something like that. Oh, okay. Well, speak for yourself. Um, Okay. Well, that was really uncomfortable. I mean, so (laughs) I was like really feeling for that. I'm like, okay, that's a genuine experience. I'm like, you know, your parents like, this happens and this happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I really was, I was fully prepared to give that person some advice and and take them under my wing, but. I should have caught it. The way he said the, the, the F word and the P word, I was like, something, it's not right, but. Okay. Call screeners on sex related topics. Yeah. How did that person find us? That's what I want to know. Is it someone I know? I know? No. <laughs> okay. So. Is that our only caller right now? Because like I'm feeling so sad. I know that stinks. That uh, you know, if if you want to talk sex positivity, call the number at the bottom of the screen nine five one. I can't talk three six four two four three zero. I know. Are you as frazzled as I am right now? Yeah, I'm like totally. I'm trying to like work past it because I'm. Really I know. Upset. I'm like, um, okay. So I'd like to take full responsibility for just what? having like the N word just blasted on my show. Um, just fair warning. If I see you in real life and I hear you talking like that, I'm gonna beat your ass. Okay, <laughs> moving yeah. on. What? What's the? Per- you know what? I don't want to waste time on that person at all. all I to the audience, though, I I truly apologize. I will get a call screener as soon as I can. I I am sorry that you had to hear that. 
I mean, that's just like the nature of this. Like we're, this is a very new show. I'm not trying to make excuses, but we don't have a screener. What can you do? Yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll start screening with my, cell, uh, with my cell phone. Like I'll just mute this and, and I, I don't know. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. On to the topic. Um, I know. That like really bummed me out. So sex positivity. There's a difference between sex positivity and being like a toxically sex positive person. I think, in my opinion, because I, I think people who like feel liberated and are suddenly like, I'm cool with sex. Everyone should be. I don't know if it's something that people talk about enough, like how you shouldn't slut shame, but you also shouldn't like prude shame, for lack of better words. And I I, I kind of see that like um, the, the whole... I don't want to say trend, but the whole attitude of being sex positive and then you get the, the flip side of the coin where someone's just not as comfortable or that's just not their preference. So they're just labeled as like a prude or something like that. Vanilla. Vanilla. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being vanilla if that's your if that's your flavor. I mean, it shouldn't be used in, a, in, in an insulting way. Like I, yeah. I remember uh, the, the, the former lead singer of my band, she was in a uh, swingers group and she's like oh, you guys are all vanilla and i'm just like okay mm -hmm. like what like why like we just don't enjoy the same thing you do and nothing's wrong with it some people like monogamy some people like polyamory some people like to remain abstinent it's whatever you want to do as long as it's not hurting somebody else and there is consent involved then it shouldn't be an issue i think that there's like maybe the idea that people who are like uncomfortable formerly and swing to the opposite side and become very comfortable with their sexuality, but almost like to the point where they're overcompensating and they think they're helping other people by pushing them and being like, no, you have to try new things to figure out what you like, which, yeah, I kind of, I'm cool with that. I advocate for that. But how do you, I don't know. It's, it's not your business, first of all, but... I don't know. Am I making am I making sense right now? No, you're not making any sense right now. <laughs> I can't tell if you're being serious. You said that like way too straightforward. I'm still trying to recover from that freaking call. I know, like, dude, whatever. It's I'll, I'll just consider it like something that happened in the DJ business because that crap when I DJed happened all the time. Did it really? Yeah, especially like people who wanted to like karaoke when I do karaoke night. It, it it's always always every time it's white dudes like they'll want to do a yeah, certain obviously. song and they'll be like uh, the, the whole part and then right when the racial slur comes up they're like as loud as possible it's like cool like is that why you sang the song like what what's the purpose of this like not only do i want to just like finally say it i want to say it really loud so everyone can see me because i'm yeah. really cool and really edgy just, IQs it, here. If uh, you all that missed the um, Fourth of July episode, not Fourth of July. Um, the coolest thing ever. Um, what was it? What holiday was it? It was New Year's Eve. IQ joined us for the New Year's Eve special, and we had so much fun. But on that note, I forgot to turn the green screen setting off, and I went to take a sip and was like, oh, "Ethan, can I keep it?" And he was like, "Yeah." yeah. So I have a really exciting water bottle today. You know, what we should do, I don't think we've actually ever formally introduced the pickup line of what this show is about. Today, like, or ever? Ever. Have we ever actually done that? Like, we don't even have the correct, we don't even have a description of what the pickup line's about yet. Because I keep forgetting to write one. <laughs> That's okay, I keep forgetting too, and I wrote one, but I don't like it. Um, I've ad-libbed a couple times, like, hey, welcome to pickup line. Ethan and I can have candid conversations about sex, love, and relationships. We're not professionals, but we hope you learned something. And if not, we hope you had fun. That's well, not my description, but that's my little intro. I ad-libbed once and I liked it. Yeah. And the show, consider it like 80% fun, maybe even 90% fun, 10 to 20% educational. This should be your, your show away from the community where you just get to veg out and, you know, not think as much. Well, I guess we all think. I can't really turn off my brain. Um, what would be a better way to put that? Well, I mean, I think it's... Not it is stressed with the tough conversations. 
Yeah. I mean, like these conversations can get tough. I mean, um, was it last show where, um, was it Chris, Christian called in and just put it, bared his soul to us about his, his grandmother that he lost. Um, so I, and, and then I talked about, um, trigger warning, just my, my, uh, uh, like I'm trying to think of it. I'm still frazzled. I'm sorry. Jiminy cricket. Okay. Um, from like a sex negativity standpoint or what sex negativity is, is implying it's sex is somehow dirty or, or dangerous, gross, unnatural, um, shaming sex workers, uh, you know, th things like that. We should be looking at it as positive, positive, positively as possible. Dude, this is like our test show. Like, go ahead and leave. I know I'm kidding. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's more important that this is happening right now because it just shows how much we're growing or how, how it's it's going to be. Th this is our growing process. It is. I hope so. Yeah. No. Uh, today is about putting your thing down and perhaps a slight amount of flipping it and reversing said thing. Put the thing down, flip it, and reverse it. If you quote Missy Elliott, we are friends automatically. I've never quoted Missy Elliott, although I've sung Missy Elliott before on karaoke. You got a big, mm, 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 gonna, mm, mm. <laughs> hey, so since we're talking about like getting slutty and sex positivity, I've been meaning to ask you, have you had a slut phase? Like, do you think back on a time where you're like, that was my slut phase? Or are you currently in your slut phase? No, dude. Like, okay. Despite have you never had one? No, I had one. Uh, okay. um, one I'm not immensely proud of. You know, uh, and not because my slut face was a bad thing. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Having a slut face, slut face. <laughs> I have one of those. Okay. Slut <laughs> face. Having a slut, having a slut phase is not synonymous with having a fuck boy phase. Okay. Did you just have like a time where? You had like your sexual exploration. You belonged to everybody and nobody, and you were just having a great time. Okay, maybe that was just me projecting. No, it was. Uh, I, I would say I had a healthy slutty phase, uh, and I also had a negative slutty phase. And when I be my negative, where I was like kind of like the the fuck boy, like I never mistakes. Yeah, like I never like bullshitted to try and pick up women but i did play the game to pick up women and that's wow, not you. Thing. yeah <laughs> I, that's not something I, I was i'm really uh, uh proud of like eh, i could have been far more responsible during uh during that period of my life like i did <laughs> never mind oh no no, no. we don't do no. that here <laughs> no, because I've done some like off the wall things and I don't see, here's the thing. I don't know if talking about it shows it as like, Hey, like we're just being open and talking about sex or if talking about this particular scenario makes it look like, Hey, look at me, look what I did. So how, how okay. do you, like, you know what I mean? Like it's hard to find that, that, that line. Mm, I guess so. Cool. Overall, I will say even during my phases, I was, very responsible when it came to when it came to consent now i have obviously learned a lot in recent years but yeah i was always very careful in that area like i yeah. i never understood how people could prey on on drunk women or or anybody drunk like that to me was i just didn't get it because dude the last thing i want is a woman or partner waking up the next day regretting me like I want her like, yep, I did that. I, I hit that. That, that. that was the best 34 seconds of my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's tragic. No, I, but that's that, that's the point is I, I want the, the, the partner to feel like whether it was good or not, that they don't regret it and that it was an overall positive experience. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, bare minimum, they should not feel like crap afterwards so and you would be serving decent <laughs> i wish i spoke out more earlier on because 
it's actually disturbing the amount of men who will make comments like, well, dude, well, why, why aren't you going home with her? She's clearly all over you. And it's like, no, no, she's drunk. Well, who cares? She wants it. And it's like, while I, I never... so normalized, I mean, like, I think people are talking about it more now, especially with the hashtag me too happening, but like it, I don't know. No one ever talked about consent when I was growing up and being single and having just sex all the time. Like I've been preyed on like, and I, and, and I, I, it took me a long time to even realize that what happened to me was wrong. A lot of the things that happened in like various relationships and some one night stands, like I didn't know at the time, like I, I, I wasn't glad it was happening, but then later I realized like, oh, I was completely taken advantage of, or, oh, that person was terrible. It wasn't my fault. Like it's so ingrained in was so ingrained in my mind and so many young women's minds that like you should just expect to be treated as prey and I think on the flip side a lot of men just think it's fine to treat women that way I, I don't I I mean if you know it's a problem and you're still doing it go fuck yourself but I feel really sad for the people who don't even realize that what they're doing is wrong or that something wrong is happening to them this no, is not even the topic, but I'm glad we're talking about this. It's consent is so important, and it's it's disturbing the 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 sheer number of times I was called gay for refusing to to engage right. in that. Like, c consent is important, and oftentimes you'll see these men who will make make statements like, "Well, I I don't want to ruin the moment by asking," and it's like, Wait, "What? I have never." in my life had a woman say, oh, I cannot believe you just asked me if you wanted to sleep with me. That totally ruined the mood. Like, it, in fact, it's the exact opposite effect in my experience. And I'm only talking about personal experience. I'm not speaking for other people. It, it's usually overwhelming positive. Like, holy shit, you actually asked. Thank you. Yeah, I'm down. Like, I don't know if I've ever trying to think if anyone's ever like i mean it kind of depends on like how well you are with reading people and and like you know people who are 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 like neurodivergent i i i feel for them when like they are apprehensive to like flirt and date in like a public setting because it's like the, it's like they don't quite i don't know like you know what i'm saying it's like some of it, I don't know. It, it comes with, there's, it takes practice, basically. It takes practice. So here's the thing, though. I have made that mistake where because I believe or I'm confident in my natural ability to read situations and people's body language, that I thought me being able to read the situation meant that if she was into or meant that it was okay. And now I look at it very differently. It's like, I, even yeah. if all the physical signs are there, I could be misinterpreting those signs. I could be making a mistake. Therefore, that's when you ask verbal, enthusiastic. Oh, wait, how does uh, how, how does you have to get enthusiastic, enthusiastic? Yes, informed consent. Yeah, uh, enthusiastic like a hell yes. Informed meaning, let's say, uh, it, like it's like uh, you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, people are aware of all the dangers. If if you have an STD, you need to inform somebody before sleeping with them. And then yeah. consent, obviously, the yes, you can do this. You know, I'm actually like in this conversation kind of realizing how much of that stuff I still have internalized left over. Like, I'm like, oh, no, a guy should just be able to read and like assume and like know based on like signals. Because like, I think that I don't know. I don't think we're taught to like communicate when we're flirting and just kind of having casual sex like it's it, it's like I almost feel like it would be awkward if someone was like are we is it okay if we now have have we now have sex I don't know I just so I don't know I'm 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 reflecting right now and this is very interesting I want to talk about Kevin's a lot uh comment it's a fine line women will say on one hand that a man is not aggressive enough but then hmm. he, you can be once you get consent and you're both in agreement on what you like. You can be aggressive. I mean, I've be aggressive. Be, be. 
as, as long as that's what they're, in, they're they're into, it's important to establish. Like, I I made the I was in one relationship once where I was trying to communicate and ask what the person was into, and oh, she, and you can say that's super weird, huh? Yeah, she, she like actually for a short period of time kind of shattered my confidence, like sexually because she was. It, why it, would it, you it, care to ask me? Right. Like, well, why are we talking about this? This is weird. You're not, you're just supposed to do it. You don't talk about it. And I'm like, Wait, yeah, like, no, I feel what? like maybe at one point I would have been the same. Like if we, because maybe I was a little bit more uncomfortable with, with, with my sexuality, with sex, with what I, what I liked that I didn't really want to talk about it. I just wanted it to kind of happen. And I probably would have been a little bit like, uh, now it's killing the mood just because I don't know. Maybe I just had this weird expectation that everyone can read my fucking mind. I don't. I don't know what it is. I need to talk to my therapist about this. <laughs> you know what? I want to address this with Ivan. Incorrect, uh, Ivan. That my is categorically false. So there is this. Mature women are into nice guys. I, women in general are into nice guys. Like I. Not since I was like in my teens have I had a girl say to me, "You're oh, you're just too nice." It, it in my opinion, there there's confusion. It, it boils down to confidence. The mm -hmm. reason you see a lot of or what you see women in it with assholes is because in most times they show confidence, whereas in my experience, the nice guys don't demonstrate that same level of confidence. It, it, in my opinion, it has nothing to do with nice versus asshole. I don't know a single woman that would say, yes, I, I like getting treated like absolute shit. Most people want somebody that's just, that's going to treat them well. So I would say at least I believe that since becoming a secular humanist and atheist, I've become a better person um, and a better potential partner in many ways. And I have yet to run into an experience where someone was like, you know, you're just, you're just too nice for me. And I'm not saying I am by any means a nice guy. I, I don't know. Uh, my former partners or future partners would have to be the judge of that. But I don't agree with that statement. Yeah. No. I um, mean, I used to date assholes, like, only. And I, I wouldn't seek them out. I just, I don't know what. I'm, I guess I'm still, you know, I, hindsight isn't always 2020 it takes a lot of self-reflection and inner work but i dated a lot of guys who were just like really terrible to me and to everyone and i don't what know I, I guess was? it just took maturing and figuring out like i don't know what was your question was it is it because those guys were perhaps more confident and asked you out whereas some of the i mean no i mean I, so like, I always think of a specific boyfriend I had who I, it didn't work out partially because he was quote unquote too nice, but it wasn't that he was too nice. It was that he put me on a pedestal all the time and he agreed with everything I said. Ooh. And it just, I, I, I really was hard on myself for a while. Cause I was like, why do I always go for assholes? I should be with this guy. He's so nice. And I'm like, but I just, I don't know, neither, neither of that is perfect because on one hand, I had a guy, he was really exciting and interesting and confident and all of this stuff, but he just happened to be an asshole. And also a lot of women are in love with potential and <laughs> think they can fix guys. Um, so I guess there was that for me. And then there was this, on the other hand, this guy is, yeah, he's a super nice guy. I like him, but there's no spice because... I'm just, I don't know. I need, I need not like a challenge, like, but just be your own person, I guess. I felt like my whole, his whole world revolved around me and it was like, oh, I did I just didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. And, and that's, it's actually great. Oh, I, sorry, please continue. No, I think I just said, and kind of like as an, um, and didn't know where I was going with it. So please. That's <laughs> your point. And I think stellar relationship advice too many people want to get rid of their independent world once they're in a relationship and think mm -hmm. everything should revolve around their partner and i i i guess i don't want to say one way is right over the other because everyone should be able to do what they want to do in their own relationship but 
I find people should have their own own lives. Like you need to have your own friend you can go to away from your relationship and not revolve everything around that that singular person. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like I value my friends too much to where like if I get in a relationship, I'm not going to just like dismiss them. They are my friends are there for me. They're valuable to me and they will definitely be there after the relationship if it ends. I was so bad about that growing up. Oh, Hannah, no. I was the worst friend. I was the worst. And my friends, like my closest friend right now, like I apologize randomly all the time. Like I'll remember like what a terrible friend I was. And I'll just be like, I'm so fucking sorry. And she's like, I know you've gotten better. Like I would get in a relationship and my friends would suddenly just back burner. Like because I was so scared of being like, alone and stuff and i guess i didn't value I, I i didn't get what i was needing out of the friendship not not to like the fault of them by any means but just i wasn't investing enough in them and i felt like if i didn't have a a, a partner i was alone and doomed and i i needed to be loved so badly growing up because i had so many fucking issues but yeah and then as soon as i would get a boyfriend or girlfriend, I, my friends became non-existent. And I've gotten a lot better about that. I mean, what's amazing is when my friends and my my partners will get along. That's the best. And that's become like one of my, like once I realized like, oh, I can have them all hang out together and they get along. That was really cool. But for a while, my best friend didn't like anyone I was dating because I, oh. she is a lot less forgiving than I am, which is amazing because she has way better taste in just people <laughs> than I do. That's like, good. I mean, I love my boyfriend and 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 she likes him. So that's that's a good sign. But I, I make a joke that she picks friends for me because I always end up being friends with her friends because she's way pickier about people. And so if I know that she has someone who stays around, they're really fucking cool. And I always end up being great friends with them. And so now we're all friends and stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I, I just, I, and, and growing up and, and now I would, I would, I would freaking die for my closest friends. I, I would never be with someone who my friends like, were like, Hey, don't, I would trust them. Like, I, I don't know. It just comes with maturity. I guess I, I was really immature. I was a terrible friend. <laughs> See, I, I am so like constantly surrounded, not in person, but online by a, a lot of, a lot of people but in terms of my inner circle or who I let close to me or like invite over to my home or hang out with very different like I I, I think I'm a pretty good judge of character and the people close to me are some awesome people and the people within this community um that we've you know been able to spawn up out of thin air you know Kenneth Leonard brain bug Jenna Belk you like I've met some really cool people through you just since starting this. Like all the people yeah, in the built a pretty kick-ass community of yeah. nice, awesome, understanding, and loving, compassionate people. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. Um, one of the callers, just so you know, uh, that's on hold. I'm not going to take you because the auto screener picks up a bunch of your F words. So I'm going to assume that since the auto screener is picking up a bunch of F words. You probably don't have much to contribute to the conversation. So if you want to talk about sex positivity um, and getting slutty, call the number at the bottom of the screen. I feel like we need to rename this episode because I think that because you and I just got like super derailed that I think it's just okay that we've just been blabbing our faces off. I mean, that's kind of a stress relief for me that I just I just start talking so whether this is on topic or not, I'm enjoying the conversation. Well, <laughs> Hannah and Ethan get fucking derailed and just talk about relationships. <laughs> isn't that every single episode, though? That's 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 the point of this show. Like, I don't think we're ever going to have an episode where we stay on topic. We both rainbow we pretty good. And we pull we each other back in. Today, it's just I think I think we deserve a pass to just <sighs> recover from that one. We'll fix it, guys. Yeah. There's a difference between a nice guy and a guy who lacks confidence. I need a guy who is more confident to bring out my confidence. With that, we can connect better. And the sexual positivity and confidence in both of us comes out. There we go. 
Like a man who takes charge. Hmm? So I, we do got to get to our caller in a moment, but. Which I, I don't trust them anymore. I don't want them. Well, I know for a fact one is good. Um, or I, I, the one has history of calling the show. So we're safe there. We're going to have to figure out what to do about this, Ethan. <laughs> I was taught at a young age that, you know, sex was, and by the way, I'm quoting what I was taught. I'm not saying this uh, like I believe it, but I was taught that, you know, sex is between a man and a woman when they're married and nothing else. And it stays in the bedroom and, you know, uh, you know, you're not supposed to masturbate. Oh, I said it on my first try. You didn't <laughs> hesitate either. Hey, I, I'm getting You're better. not supposed to masturbate. Ugh. So for, for, for me, talking sex is like so hard because I don't know like what's appropriate, what's not, what is positivity, what's not. Because to me, it was just all all shamed for very long. And you're just mm -hmm. not supposed to talk about it. Oh, Do where we, is that? I, I For some reason, I thought you were just going to like go to the collar. Oh, should I go to the caller? <laughs> no, I don't know. I felt like that was a segue for some reason. But also I was reading the comments. Um, best name ever. We had a caller who was not genuine. And that is what happened to us. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go back and listen to it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can. Is it possible to edit it out in a live later? No, the only thing I can do is delete the original stream, edit it, and then re-upload it. Hmm. Good thing I make sure all these videos are hashtag not made for children. Okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Let's get to the caller. Uh, all right. Allison, you are on with Hannah and Ethan. What's going Hi, on? Hi, Allison. Hi. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good. I'm doing okay. That, like, uh, was kind of an interesting call but um yeah i'm calling because i wanted to actually talk to you hannah you uh, uh when you're on secular sexuality and you answered my my question uh from the uh mailbag oh my gosh yeah yeah so um I just wanted to give you an update on what happened with that uh, i talked with my friend and then I started going to DBT therapy. And um, then um, he just decided that um, it was too much for him. And so we broke up or he, well, he broke it off with me. Oh. Broke it off with me on Christmas Eve. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did I give you, Allison, I'm so sorry, but can you remind me what, the, like scenario was like I I don't know sure. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry no problem I'll actually read you my original message would that help yeah oh I'll remember it because I was I was petrified okay. to go on secular sexuality so it's ingrained in my memory but I don't remember which one yeah it's okay okay so my message was I'm currently in friends with benefits kind of relationships. The sex I have is amazing and I have mind blowing orgasms. <laughs> I, I remember. Sexual yeah, you remember me now. <laughs> I, I remember you now. <laughs> yes, I do. So, so, okay. So did I give you terrible advice or is it for the best? I guess, I don't know. How are you feeling? No. It was told me for the best, it, and it's like I never want to go into sex when I'm triggered and hypervigilant and not in the mood and just on edge, and I never wanted to do it just for him and be like, oh, my God, okay, I'll just do this and just hopefully get it over with really, really fast. Like, yeah. And so, and I told him. I told him that and like along with other stuff and um, yeah, but I mean, it was like five years, like, well, four and a half, five years. Right? Wow. And, uh, Allison, are you, uh, can you stay close to the phone? I learned a lot. Allison, it sounds like you're like doing what? a lot of stuff. Could you talk directly into the phone? I'm trying. There's something up with my headset. I don't know what it is. 
Is that better? Yes, there we go. Oh, much better. Yeah, I could still hear you, but I guess Ethan couldn't. <laughs> okay. I'm, a little bit I'm say. holding on to the thing now. No, you're good. But, um, so I want to get positive now. Okay. Okay. Uh, in within that five years of a relationship, like right before I started, I got diagnosed with ADHD. Okay. And I started medication. I started Vyvanse. And then a few months later, I met this guy and then started getting intimate with him. And I actually had my first, like, actual genuine orgasm. Wow. Was, oh, my God. It is possible. But it's like, without the medication, my mind would just be flipping and flopping and going all over the place. And I just couldn't concentrate on anything. And, I, like, I could feel something starting. And then it would just, like, drop. And it was like. Oh, my God. Gosh, that's exciting. Yeah, so it's like, so I discovering that, I was like, holy, you know, this is going to be freaking great. And so throughout that whole relationship, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about my body. I learned a lot about what I like. And so now it's like the next relationship I have when I'm completely ready is going to be uh, – it's going to be a lot better for, for both of us because I'll be able to say, Hey, you know, I really like this or I really like that, or I get in the mood for this or, you know, this really works on me. And then on the other hand, I've learned things that trigger me that it's like, you don't like, I mean, you guys were talking sure. earlier about things that guys say was like, oh, why didn't you bring her home? Blah, blah, blah. Like that shit turns me off so fast. Mm -hmm. like, I can, uh, Allison, watching... so I can heavily relate to what you're talking with, about with the ADHD and it absolutely sucks. So for one, uh, I've, I've always had ADHD, but after I recovered from epilepsy, it got worse like wow. to the point where I can't focus on anything and that's including during sex. Like it, it could be like amazing sex. And all of a sudden I'm like, wait, did I email my friend back? Crap. I, I've got to, I didn't finish setting up that computer. Like, and then I'm just like, no focus, focus. And then it's done. And then unfortunately the occasionally women in that scenario would be like, wait, what's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, it's not you. It's my brain. It doesn't focus. Like, it's like a, a radio station that's just always picking up everything. And so are we not supposed to think about like every other thing in the world while we're never mind? Apparently not. Okay. And, um, well, I, I okay, so spoiler, I, I have ADHD too, Allison. So like I just I'm just like, oh, that's normal, right? <laughs> well, it sucks because it can Believe it or not. It can well, I don't like medication for ADHD. I didn't work for me. I mean, it's just me I take I, I take medication for other things, but just not ADHD. So I just I just live with it, and it's I, I guess I think about like cats and dogs while I'm doing it sometimes. Not in that way. I'll just be like, did I feed the cat? Well, and there's a downfall to to ADHD medicine for me. Um, it makes it like twice as hard to get off on ADHD medicine. Wow. Like way harder. And I'm noticing, so I've tried, if anyone has any suggestions, I genuinely do need help to get my ADHD under control. I have tried Adderall, I've tried weed, I've tried Vi, Vi, is it? Vivance. Vivance. I, I don't know what else to do, but like, I need yeah. something because the only thing that I am apparently on point with is my atheist channel. Like when it comes to <laughs> shows organization booking people don't know how you do it super saiyan focus anything else nope not at all yeah and it's literally like when it involves my channel it's a laser it's nope there's there is nothing that can break this focus but i want that focus when i'm having sex where i can be <laughs> like okay i'm just going to enjoy this awesome shit right now I think it's really hard to be in the moment with ADHD, kind of. Yes. Yeah. But Allison, cool. I'm really, I mean, so you're seeing, a, you're talking to a professional now, right? Yeah, I'm at DBT and I have a, an individual therapist too. So. Good. 
That's wonderful. And, you know, I'm sorry that things had to end with you in person, but I guess just, I guess look at it as a, a stepping stone and, and you learned so much during that time and it's going to, the next, I mean, the person you're going to end up with or, or the person who you get intimate with again, like, I'm really hoping it's someone who is patient with you and listens to you and is respectful of your boundaries. And the second you feel triggered, like, I don't want you to feel pressure to, to have to perform for the sake of them. I mean, that's sweet of you to like, you know, want to put others needs before yours. But when it comes to triggering stuff and in your mental health, that's something you never want to compromise, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Like, um, you're exactly point on point. Squirrel, yes, thanks. Um, <laughs> I it's like, what I found that really, really helped with like getting in the mood and, and getting all set up and everything and being able to actually hey, like Allison, concentrate a, and get into it. Your headset's just, doing it again. Can you talk directly into the phone? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Crunching. Like I find. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. It just sounded like you were like playing Yahtzee or something. <laughs> <laughs> we know you're not. It's okay. Sitting. That's mm -hmm. sitting. Damn it. Anyway, <laughs> my best way to prepare is to like just no music no tv no outside distractions no other people home you know just try and eliminate as many distractions as possible like i found that like not having music on improved greatly you know instead of me singing along to it in my head <laughs> no, i was thinking out loud yeah do you know so, like i found that helped a lot so, and uh, yeah, um, what else was I going to say? I don't know. What, Alan, um, uh, hey, you're in, uh, we totally get that part. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we do have, an, <laughs> have another caller uh, we have to get to, but we should title this episode ADHD and sex. Yeah. yeah. Right? We no, should do an episode real. of ADHD and sex because we were all like, I want to give you an example. Imagine, like, I'm a comedic person. And I am always thinking of jokes, and I cannot help that. But oh, I crack so I crack jokes during sex all the time. It's awful. <laughs> uh, like, like I'm so sorry, Thomas, but the most recent time where the where we were getting down, we were just belly laughing, like I don't know how I. Okay, I just okay. I got to just stop there. <laughs> I will say this when that to me is how like sexual intimacy is built when moments like that, where you're not taking everything so seriously and you end up taking too seriously. It's a goofy fucking thing. <laughs> but that that's what I was going to say is like, there's times where I think of jokes and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't say this right now. Or I'm just like, no, or, I sometimes, am. or sometimes I do say them and it'll just be like, Sorry, I, I can't control it. I'm oh trying to. <laughs> oh, Allison, I'm really, really glad to hear from you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go. Sorry, Hannah. No, no, no. I didn't hear that you were talking until I was like already blabbing. Go ahead. Okay. There is a delay here, too. So, um, just like with the jokes thing, just like proceed with caution, you know, like. I love joking around. I love laughing and stuff, but there are sex jokes that like turn me off in a second, you know, and it's like, you just gotta be mindful of the subject that you're joking about. Like oh, if there's a chance that someone could take it and it reminds them of like a traumatic experience, I wouldn't recommend joking about it, I but like, you gotta know your partner, you know, the person's laughed about it before, then go for it you know like what you know like i don't know i want to find like honestly i want to find someone who is who loves cats as much as i do and I gets absolute cats. joy and goes sweet 
when you see like little blind kittens learning how to get downstairs safely without wiping out, you know, and it's the cutest thing ever. It's on Facebook, by the way. And- <laughs> oh, it was, yeah. I'm so really glad to hear an update from you because, like, oh. I didn't know, I didn't think this would ever happen. I just figured I'd answer that and never know, never know. But <sighs> now you have so your own show where people can call in regularly and update you. That's wonderful. I didn't even yeah. think about that. That's freaking sick. Thank you, uh, Allison, for, for taking the time to call in and share your experience with us. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to me bladder on and get distracted by squirrels across the screen. We will. <laughs> I'm proud of you. Bye. <laughs> That's um, yeah. awesome. I, with, with, Kenneth Leonard and Jenna Belk, we did an episode on mental health and humor. And it was by far one of my, my, my favorite episodes with Jenna Belk because I learned that I know a whole bunch about humor, way more than I thought to it. And there is so much to humor, like even like pranking, like <laughs> consent goes into my pranks. And that's why, because someone asked me one day, like, how hey. do you... What? Consent, that just sounds terrible. Okay, go ahead. Wait, consent going into pranks? Oh, okay, okay. So, okay, no, I I don't know. I took that the wrong way. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. well, I, like, prank people regularly at work. Like, it doesn't matter if you're a VP, director, whatever. But here's the thing. I am smart about it. Like, for instance, scare pranks are fun, but... You should not randomly scare prank people because there are people who suffer from anxiety, you could have a heart murmur, like you, you don't want to cause them mental anguish. So like for me, if, if I am like sense someone like is into pranking, I will always ask them, how are you with scare pranks? Are you okay with them? Because to me, scaring someone without their consent is a shitty thing to do because I, I get okay. like, <laughs> what? So, like, I love scare pranks, and I read somewhere that it's a form of sadism, and it makes sense. <laughs> My best friend would be so, just, like, so happy you said that, because she freaking hates me for it. I love to scare her, no, and she no, no, doesn't no. like it. It's, it's, that's a total... Like, to is me, it a dick move? It's a major dick move. Like, I mean, she laughs. Well, yeah, but <laughs> eventually, it, there was like, for instance, my a, anxiety had gotten so bad during my depression that when fireworks were going off, I would be sitting like on my bed shaking because I couldn't handle it, like freaking out. Okay, but she doesn't have like a like a like a disorder. She I just put- she just gets mad at me. <laughs> People didn't know that. Like people, like if they try to scare me, like, dude, if you like come up and grab me from behind for like, it'll take like, I'll like, I'll look calm after a moment, but it will take me 20, 30 minutes to calm down. My heart will just be like, and I, it's horrible anxiety. And it's like a, it's like you're stuck. Melissa, I'm sorry. I feel like such a douche lord. That is a douche. Okay. So she's like my, for more context, she's like my little sister. So there's that like evil need inside of me to torture her because she she grew up she's two years younger than me and i've known her since she was like seven or eight she grew up she was like like one of a very close neighbor so i like lived with her practically and so the age difference growing up kind of felt like she was my little sister and then as we you know got into our teens and in early adulthood it's just i mean she has two degrees and has traveled way more than i have so she's like my big sister now but growing up, I just wanted to ruin her life for some reason and pranked the crap out of her. And she always loves to tell people what a terrible person I am because of it. I, I still, and my uncle will admit this, he believes he traumatized me from constantly scaring me and locking me in, in rooms as a kid. Like in okay. the dark. I think that I have like issues from certain pranks f- growing up. Like being a child and being exposed to certain kinds of fear that were just so like they were supposed to be funny, but they weren't. Right. Yeah. That, well, that's why I don't think you should ever scare a stranger. You shouldn't. No. You shouldn't no. scare prank a stranger. Like I'm sorry. Like the pranks I see on YouTube, the scare ones. Like. Oh, so that's funny. 
you're just being an asshole. Like you do not have the consent to just scare random people. And it's so shitty. And to me, no, jump scares like, make me cry. It was uh, when I was seven, I saw a jump scare. Uh, my face was this close to the screen and the volume was turned all the way up. I was convinced that if I s caught a tiny picture in the screen, I'd get a hundred bucks. So I put my face right up and then all of a sudden there's like a bloody face screaming. And I was like seven. So when I see a scare prank, I get sweaty and my eyes well up still to this day. And I, I've, I kind of did a little bit of exposure therapy uh, to like, I just, I just started to spook myself all the time. Cause I was like, I'm tired of feeling this way and I've gotten better with it. But for a long time, like if so, I thought someone was going to scare prank me, I would grab my ears and run out of the room crying. Like as an adult, like this was not that long ago. I had an ex-boyfriend who said, Hey, look at this video, come sit down. And I literally, I knew what he was going to do. I grabbed my ears and like went in the other room crying. Cause I was like, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. And he's like, oh, well, I was like, nope, it's, I understand it's supposed to be funny. That's don't ever do that to me. Now I can handle them. I, I, I've been on the internet long enough to where it just, after a while, it starts to stop facing you. Don't give me sympathy eyes. It's not that serious. Oh. <laughs> uh, we're going to get to our caller in a moment, but one other thing I wanted to point out is like consent even goes into my, my, my humor with people. So for instance, I'm great with like self-deprecating humor or if somebody ribs me, like I laugh it off, but some people do have confidence issues and therefore like I won't banter with everybody. Well, I mean, some right. people don't banter, but some people like if they do have confidence issues and then you try and banter, like go after like some of their little things, it can upset them. So yeah, I don't know. I, I consent is more important and in every aspect of our lives and in areas like we don't even think about like, I've slowed down on making videos, goofy videos, even with my nephew on my Facebook, because I'm like, well, wait a second. What if he lives to regret this? Like, is he even aware that I'm putting him in a video right now? And how is he going to feel about it years from now? So, yeah, no, that's a really good point. And I think a lot of people don't know that because a lot of people just document every moment of their life and document strangers, document their family members and just and then just post them. And I don't think people really think about I thought you should probably get their consent. See, I originally thought you were saying like, oh, I make consent the joke in my humor. And I was like, well, that's why I just freaked out in the beginning. I was like, what are you even, what? <laughs> I would never. But I understand now. Oh, yeah, I scare Eric because I'm a freaking sadist. <laughs> well, Hannah, you do have my, my consent to scare me as long as I have Ooh. consent to scare you. I like being scared now. It took a long time. I, I honestly, I just started watching a lot of horror movies. Like I like during uh when I had to quarantine for like two weeks straight at the beginning, I just watched horror movies every day. And I think that's helped. And I also started playing like scary video games and just Ooh. trying to just like. I don't know, I like to look my fears in the face and, and it doesn't always work out. Sometimes I just trigger that absolutely thing shit at myself. Um, but hey, I'm trying. Uh, I don't don't. I, I don't recommend this. This is what I do. I just like, I'm like, I'm scared of this thing. So I'm just going to stare it in the face. We got to get to our caller. And we should okay, let's go. Topic. Um, uh, back to sex positivity. Kevin, you're on. We were talking about getting scared. What and the hell? Then how are you? Hey, uh, I didn't want to trigger your call screener. So no, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm Kevin. Um, first of all, hi, uh, Ethan, Hannah. I appreciate you both. I won't scream any obscenities at you. Please uh, don't, because I like actually really kind of bummed me the frick out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was on earlier. I just wanted to clarify uh, in, in the chat um, when I said when I was talking about aggressiveness, I wasn't uh, necessarily referring to like sexual aggression, um, although I, I have had some experience with like BDSM, but I was more referring to. Um, like initiation and, and flirtation when, when you're in a, a friendship or, or any other mm -hmm. type of acquaintanceship with somebody, um, you know, how do you read the signals? Like that, that's a difficulty for me. And Ethan was talking about self-confidence. I, myself, I have low self-esteem. I have trouble uh, like recognizing signals and initiating conversations. And I was just kind of looking for some advice there um, as far as, 
what to look for. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's not like really appropriate, but yeah. You mean I, like assertiveness rather than like aggression? Right. Right. Okay. Are you yeah, like, I don't know. Specific or like kissing or asking someone out? Like, we're, uh, what are you referring? Yeah, to? even getting to that step of asking someone out and and not being off putting and not being. I mean, um, it's it's difficult for for some of us, I guess. No, I don't blame you because like everyone's different and what they prefer. So like I understand how that can be intimidating. Um, I mean, I can only give. <laughs> my advice i mean if you're like a more of a of a shy guy i mean ah so let me think about this while ethan talks for a minute because i want to i don't want to give crap advice i and th this is what works for me i'm not saying it'll work for you but i find this method to be particularly effective uh but i have more laid back way of doing things and obviously you're gonna have to adjust your your tone demeanor to to fit yourself but I'm usually like, hey, uh, I would love to take you out sometime if you're interested. If not, that's totally cool too. Let me know. But rejection is terrifying, Ethan. Yeah, but you know, yeah. I was about to say, you get used to it when you've been <laughs> rejected enough. No, but it's true. Everyone gets rejected and it freaking sucks. But the, it's like just the more practice you have, like the less it sucks. Like I've been rejected. Would you believe that? <laughs> No way. You, I, I don't believe no. it. Um, <laughs> so I, I find that approaching situations more laid back, like for one, I, I, I think at times, and again, I'm only speaking from my own personal experience, not telling anybody else what to do, um, that when you call it a date or when you say like, I want to take you on a date, it immediately puts these expectations on the mm. table. How am I going to act? How am I going to dress? Where are we going to go? We got to do this. We have to do this. It has to be like this. I prefer like just being laid back with it. Would you like to hang out sometime? That doesn't come with any expectations outside of hanging out. Now, obviously be careful. You don't want to be like, hey, let's hang out and watch a movie because sometimes people think you're implying that you want to sleep with them. Now, if I do ask a girl to come over for a movie, I'll be like, and just so we're clear though, I don't mean it like that. I legitimately mean chill. And it's funny, Holly, my former co-host, when I first asked her to hang out, she was like, I actually thought you just wanted to sleep sleep with me. She goes, it took me a few times to hanging out with you to realize you actually just wanted to hang out with me. I was like, well, yeah, I wasn't lying. <sighs> um, yeah. But I, I, I think for one, approach it as, as open-minded as possible. You, you are going to get rejected. But the truth is you're never going to know what they'll say if you if you don't at least try because there are so many times where i found myself in situations later on where a, a woman had said to me like wait you were into me why didn't you ask me out and i was like i i, I was scared and they're like why were you scared you should have just asked the kevin like we have in my opinion one life there is no second chance and the absolute worst thing that can happen is the person says, I'm not into you, I'm not interested. Granted, no, I take that back. Someone could be an asshole, but they can kill you. If you approach it and just in a very calm, straightforward way, I, I think you'll find the results will be will be positive. More positive. No, I I like as someone who would be on the receiving end of that, because I am I'm terrified of women and I don't ask them out. So <laughs> <laughs> Yay, internalized by phobia. So uh, the more, like, the less pressure there is about someone asking me out, the more inclined I'm like, yeah, that sounds fun if, like, they don't make a big deal about it, I guess. So I guess I agree. Yeah, just be open, be honest. Um, I, again, and I, I, I just found that labeling at the date makes it a pain in the ass for both sides like hey start with a coffee you want to grab a cup of coffee with me uh you want to go for over the summer i found like the i was meeting people left and right by just saying hey you want to go for a walk or dude you want to do some edibles and laugh like <laughs> that works for me <laughs> um yeah. i would say just just try because you you don't know um and the 
worst thing you could do is, is risk missing a good opportunity. Um, and if you do get rejected, it, it's important to show them that you, you can handle and be like, okay, cool. I, I appreciate you being honest with me because we, we should be able to turn people down or go out with them when we want to. So I guess just be as chill as possible. I, I, I dude, I have such yeah. laid back advice. I don't know if it's helpful. I'm sorry. I don't know. I think that like, yeah. I'm trying to think of like guys who have been interested in me who were like a little bit more awkward and shy. And I don't know, like you can try. I don't know. I've always liked if they try to be my friend first and then it develops into something. Cause then I don't know if there's, there's, I don't know. You just kind of feel it out. I don't know. This is terrible. I'm not good at this. Ethan, I agree with you. Let's say you do go on a, a, on a date. Remember just because you're going on a date with someone doesn't mean you need to kiss them or that they're inviting any type of physical touch, um, onto them. So, uh, try, be patient, be understanding. And I, I would say the most important lesson I've learned of 2020 in the dating industry is be industry direct. industry. Yeah. Uh, dating. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Be direct. Hey, this is, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I'm not looking for. And to me, I think applying this, I don't know what to call it. Laid backness. Like what, what do you call it? Just approaching like, the dating. Yeah, don't, don't make a big deal out of it with, with this positive, whatever attitude has for me largely worked out because even in the situations where we were both like, yeah, we didn't click, we've ended up being friends and just still hanging out. So there we go. Don't go into the situation with too high expectations. Go into every situation hoping to make a new friend. And if you get a bonus out of it, there you go. But remember, if you're if you're incapable of being friends, then you shouldn't be in a relationship either. So make a friend first. I hope that's solid advice. Is that helpful Absolutely. at all, Kevin? Or am I just rambling now? No, no, I, I appreciate you both. Um, it's, it's been very, very good advice. Um, you know, I guess maybe just affirming some things I, I was already thinking, you know, but but yeah, I, I appreciate you. And I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, yeah, um, it's been a great show, and um, I, I wish you both uh, a lot of luck. Thank you so much, Kevin. It was nice you as well. You. Thank you for not screaming profanities. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have a great one. Thanks. Thank you. Too. you. Best name ever says a bonus or a boner out of it. Well, it could go either oh, way. I think. <laughs> a bonus boner do you know the advantage of doing this show or not just this show but having youtube in general people are way more comfortable meeting you like because i can just be like hey especially on dating apps like if we're talking i'll be like look just oh, right. here's my portfolio this is what i right. how i present myself well I, I, when I hung out with a, uh, met a new person the other day, she had invited me into her home and I was like, all right, I got to ask you, why are you comfortable with someone you don't know coming to your house? And she's like, well, a few things. She's like, you, you're you always public about everything. <laughs> YouTube. She's like, you're, you've shown to be emotionally consistent and you're friends with your ex-wife. She goes, you can't be a total fuck up with all those things going on. And I was like, wait, wait I like her. Like, wait a second. I'm like the, the, the ex-wife thing doesn't freak you out. And, and we were she just was, talking oh, about how you like meet women and they automatically freak out about your ex-wife. And then like, dude, she's, she's not going anywhere. She's my best friend. So if, if, if you, if it's the choice between you and her, I'm going to choose my best friend, just like I would choose my other best friend fits. Yes. And I learned that uh, too late. Melissa, I would die for you. <laughs> oh, and, and she's going to stop scaring you too. No. <laughs> I'll ask her first. Hey, you mind if I scare you real quick? And she's like, fuck no. And I'm like, boo. So I don't think this next caller is a troll, but I honestly don't know. Just like 
let me talk to them first before they start saying anything. Are we saying hello to them already? I got a really good idea. I know how to handle this. I'll be muting my mic for just a moment. Okay. So that. Are you going to screen them? Should I vamp? Hey, is this Garrett? And I'm not a troll, to... I promise. Okay. All right. Please don't. How how are you, Garrett? I'm doing all right. Am I on the am I on the air? You're here. We can all hear you. Although I'm nervous. Okay. Hey Hannah, this is Alex's friend, Garrett. I saw your uh story on Instagram and I thought I'd listen along. <gasps> Garrett, Garrett? Yeah, this is Garrett. The one who shredded his fingers off? What's up? Yeah, that's me. Okay, it's you. I just learned about that recently, and I had to shred papers the other day, and I thought of you, and I freaked out. I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh. Well, I wish I was on camera so I should, I could show everybody. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I heard uh, the last caller, and I thought I would just give a few pieces of advice because I've had a little bit of dating experience. Thank you. So... So, so with the whole dating thing, I, I'm not really, um, I'm, I'll admit right off the bat, I'm not someone who has like a lot of sex and that's not really a bad thing. Me neither. No, it's not. I, it's okay. Uh, I do know, <laughs> I do know quite a bit about, you know, dating and like asking people out for sure. Sweet. Okay. Let's hear. Um, I think definitely kind of like what you guys said earlier is very true, you know? Um, but I also think it's very important not to set rules right off the bat. Like, I'm so it, sorry. It, Someone just said it's muted. What's up? Oh, no, 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 no. She's sorry. Best name's talking about, uh, she, uh, she's not good with graphic stuff. So she had to turn the stream down because you talked about the, the, the fingers. So she, Oh, had to I'm so up. sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay. I thought that the whole thing was was totally muted. Oh, I feel so bad. Okay. Don't, don't bring that up again. No, sorry, continue. Okay, I won't. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to talk about it. Best name. No, don't. No, I don't. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so I definitely think it's it's great, like, not to set rules right off the bat because, you know, like, if it really depends on their cultural background for sure. Like some people from different cultures, like I know um, like Latin cultures, they definitely go towards like more confident guys who say what they want right off the bat. Sometimes they're a little more uh, confident, not so much aggressive, but, but they say what they want and they mean it, you know? Um, in the United States, uh, it can be a little bit different, you know, like telling people like, Hey, I want to date you. Hey, I want to get married or Hey, I want to have sex or something like that. You know, you can scare a lot of people doing that. Um, so definitely like asking people out right off the bat. Um, in my experience dating people from this country, um, a lot of people, they don't, they're not, uh, immediately available to say a lot of things about themselves right off the bat. You know, you ask them what they're interested in, what they like to do all that stuff. And they're like, Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what my favorite color is, you know? <laughs> and so you just gotta, you just gotta throw suggestions out there. And when you want to ask them out on a date or something like that, if they don't give you any ideas, you just start throwing things out there. You say like, Hey, you want to go to the movies, you know, like during non COVID time, Hey, uh, there's this uh, botanical garden. I really wanted to check out. Are you interested in going, you know, stuff like that. And eventually, like, through trial and error, hitting all the bumpers, you'll eventually start to figure out things about them as you give them ideas on, like, what they can tell you, what they like, and what they don't like, you know? Right. And uh, event eventually, they'll be down to try something, and then that's how you kind of get your foot in the door, and then you get to meet them in person. Yeah. I think that's what I have the most success with, for sure. That yeah. Pretty good advice. Um. I, I would have one correction. I think movies is a terrible first date only because you can't talk. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, other... here's the thing. Someone said if you go to a dinner and a movie, do dinner after the movie so you can talk about the movie. 
yes, but then it's still like two hours of awkward silence sitting next to someone you barely know. Yeah, okay. You're like, right. Get comfortable first, like have a conversation, get to know each other, then go see a movie. Because I find like yeah, even I'm, if it's just going out to coffee for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Coffee, water, tea. Just go out for some water. <laughs> Stay hydrated, my dudes. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me out for coffee, I'm like, uh, I don't drink coffee, but I'll go. Well, do you like tea? No, I don't drink tea, but I'll go. Well, do you like drinking? I don't really drink <laughs> very often, especially during the day. It's like, wow, you must be really fun at parties, Ethan. I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll happily <laughs> smoke some weed with you. <laughs> oh, are you one of those guys that has 420 friendly in his Tinder bio? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Look, look, there is a reason for that. Well, okay. yeah, I mean, for real, but it's also weird. as long as you don't have a picture of yourself with like a fish or like yeah. a dead animal. Gary, do you have a picture of yourself with a dead animal in your Tinder profile? No, I don't. All right, but, you're good. <laughs> you got to understand marijuana is a huge part of my life uh, because I, I have my medical card. Like I, I, I technically do need it for, for epilepsy. So it's not going anywhere. Um, right. and so like, gotta be I, cool with my ex-wife and my marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> like, and my atheist channel. And yeah. I am like, not really like, I'm pretty out there, goofy dude. You know, you've seen my Facebook photos, you know, what I've I seen your ass practically at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Like I have found situations where like, we'd be messaging and then like uh, a girl would say like, Oh, I'm. Just so you know, I'm I'm not into smoking and I can't talk like to anyone. I'm just like, you know what? I just put everything in the profile. Let's get it all out of the way now. If yeah, I like being it, straight up. Get it out of the way. Right. Like, I, I don't want to waste your time. I really don't want to waste my time either. My time's important to me. There we go. Garrett, I'm so glad you called. Yeah, no, it was it was, it was fun talking to you guys. Yeah, I guess I guess to sum it all up uh yeah just just don't set any rules just just go in it with the idea of just wanting to have fun with the person yes. and if something comes with it cool if something doesn't it's okay you know like don't put all your eggs in one basket like try to talk to multiple people at once and kind of just play a game of elimination and see who makes it to the end you know that's what i do well it's I don't supposed to be fun game but yes uh, mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying like <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it is yeah. ha have fun <laughs> um I feel like an app for it. It's a game, Ethan. I don't I, honestly. I. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny when I my my first original idea for a show like this was with somebody else, like about a year ago before Holly, and we had recorded an episode. And I look back at the dating advice I was giving, and I was like, "Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> no, no, you're done." You know, it, it changes all the time. People change. You know, their ideas change, their rules change. That's just the way it is, right? For sure. Uh, anyways, Garrett, thanks for calling in. We got to hurry yeah. up. Uh, we got to get to our last callers because we are well over time. But it was uh, it was nice talking to you. Okay. Yeah, nice talking to you guys too. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right, let's get to this next caller again. That's a buddy of mine. Trigger warning. Um. um, um, um Melissa, the caller. Melissa, you're on with Ethan and Hannah. Yes, we can hear you. I can't hear them. Hey, Hannah. Oh. Yeah, oh. we can hear you now. Okay, perfect. Um, so I just wanted to touch on the topic for the night really quick. I know you guys were just kind of uh, free balling, um, but I just wanted to ask you guys what are some of your sluttiest moments. What am I? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. You know, I thought I'd spice it up. No, I'm so happy. I just have to really think about this because, like, I, I think that I, like, oh, I had a slut face, but it was actually a little bit pathetic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've porked in some weird you, places. You said you don't have to think about it? Nope. I'm not. Ethan I'm knows. <laughs> I'm just keeping my mouth shut. Why? Hmm. 
bloodiest moment um <gasps> body I, shots I, in mexico ooh. i okay no god you know what's really embarrassing about this story my mom knows about this because she was kind of there <laughs> not for when like That's things awesome. went down but okay i went to puerto vallarta with my mom when i was like 17 i think oh god she leaves me alone in an ice cream shop for like five minutes because she finds some other like tourists and is like, oh my God, I'm from California. Where are you from? Wisconsin. So she leaves me for like five minutes. Okay. In like touristy places in Mexico, everything is a tequila shop. So we just like stop for ice cream for a couple minutes. I'm with my mother. She leaves for five minutes. She comes back. I'm laying on the bar and the boy behind the counter is doing body shots off of me. Yes, I eventually ended up sleeping with him. Oh, well, that's not that. Sad. I love it. It's not bloody, but it was weird because my mom was there. Not like for the sleeping with part but for like she just like witnessed me <laughs> just ending up on a bar at an ice cream parlor getting body shots taken off of me. But that's probably not my sluttiest moment. I think that was that was like a party girl moment. That doesn't really count. Okay, you know what? I can I will talk about one of my slutty moments because I was going to mention it earlier, not because it's a slutty moment, but just to talk about the importance of uh, of consent and improper power dynamics. So, Ooh. I was a manager at this uh, at this restaurant. Oh no! And, yes, and a girl and I ended up having a you know re relationship. We uh, had sex. It, it was always a fantasy of mine to have sex in a, one of those big walk-in coolers. That's so because, stupid. I'm sorry. That's really mean of me. I'm just saying, like, those things are cold. Right. Like, you can walk uh, in at any moment. The cold and the warm back and forth. It keeps your body cool. Like, it actually feels pretty good. Okay. So, I'm sorry for shaming you. Like, we actually did it in many places in the restaurant. However, to be perfectly clear, I am also a clean freak. So it was not in areas where that it could be mixed or like near food in any capacity. I was very careful. So, um, but it was wrong because she was an employee of mine. Now we are friends and I actually, a couple of years back, apologized to her. And she's like, dude, I don't care. I, I was really into you. It didn't matter. And I was like, really? You don't think I'm a total asshole? She's like, you know, she said, no, not at all. So we still have, uh, you know, we're still friends. Um, but I would say that or when I would DJ, let's just say I occasionally enjoyed receiving some stuff in the DJ booth. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. I would not do that again. But yes, I if like I knew the person. um there was a few different DJ booths where I enjoyed something while I DJed. I can't even say it. Hey, life of a DJ, right? <laughs> yes. Although I will say this, a lot of the DJs are friggin' assholes because they actually, most of them, in my opinion, in my experience, I should say not my opinion, my opinion and my experience, they rarely care or pay attention if the girl's intoxicated. And that just, it drives me frigging nuts. That's sad. It is. It's just like, well, whatever. Like, I, I, I don't get that. Like, how people can do that is beyond me. But I understand it because I understand that the mindset is just like they don't fucking care. But oh, that's... okay. I got a funny story. Okay. So, I, 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 I don't know if I, I should be opening my mouth or not. But anyways, I was DJing a bar one night, and my ex was there, and. She comes up with with uh, a girl I had messed around with, and they both like kind of corner me. They're like, "We've heard we've both messed around with you." <gasps> Eskimo like, sisters. And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, uh, "What would you say if we asked you to mess around with us together?" And I was <gasps> like, "I'd say you were full of shit. I don't believe you." Uh, needless to say, they called my bluff, and like the three of us went back. So I would say. That was one of my sluttier moments, too. That's not slutty. That's amazing. 
Well, I would say it's not amazing. saying that slutty can't be amazing. I'm just saying, like, you know, there's the there's the connotation with slutty that I'm like, oh, you did something naughty. No, 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 no. But it was awkward. It was funny. Like you could, we were all so confident until it got time to do it, and two of us were just like, "What do we do? Never done this before. There's three people. How do we act? Like who starts? Where do like, my arms go? Who, so I, who do like, I? Um, like." Like it's like wait, who 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 wants this first? What what, what, what <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. Oh, can I say something really messed up that I did? Sure. All right, I'm gonna say it because it's been long enough and I don't care anymore. All right. Are you sure? This is the, this is the kind of person Miss Hannah used to be. <laughs> My ex boyfriend. We had broken up already for a couple of years. He invited me to his. Well, it was weird. He was like, want to come to me and my girlfriend's birthday party? And I was like, all right. It was just like back like in when I was like in when I was in college. So I was like, is there booze? Yeah, I'll go. I show up and his friend who I kind of had a crush on was there. But like I'm at my ex-boyfriend's party for his girlfriend at the time. I ended up porking. People, hmm. I don't really remember this. I ended up porking like his close friend at that party on the couch while people were like sleeping nearby. And then the ex-boyfriend found out and was very mad at me. But I was like, you invited me to your girlfriend's birthday party. I think that's kind of like permission granted that like we're no longer going to be weird towards each other about that we dated. You know what I mean? Did that story make sense? No, <laughs> I think so. Maybe. Okay. I need, okay. Ex-boyfriend invites me to his Wait, then girlfriend's know. party. You dropped. I don't know what happened to you, Melissa. I don't know why you left. Oh, probably because I was taught. I probably because my story made no sense. Basically, That's I pucked. I, I, I pucked. Hey, puck. I puck porked my ex-boyfriend's very close friend at a birthday party that I was invited to for the girlfriend of my ex-boyfriend and that it was just it was it was not even that it was slutty it was weird it was just a weird thing well okay then it was just me getting lost so it made sense to to holy kool-aid thanks so babe i always make sense to him <laughs> the um, he's the only one who understands me <laughs> okay this was a and then i'm going to shut up after this but this is <sighs> the other thing i did i went from there was three people I I dated, and it was I went from the one best friend to the next best friend to the following best friend, and it's like you were that's, homie hopping. Yeah, that's not only slutty, but it's shitty. Like, I I don't, I, I would never do that again because I think it was kind of crappy to do. Mm. But just going around dating people's friends, like, dude, that's not cool. I've only done that to guys who were awful to me. Oh, okay. Holy cool, it did not be awful to him. Don't be awful. I'm going to stop talking right now. <laughs> Should we get uh, to our last caller since we're uh, like well over time? Yeah. Are you okay, I mean, Fuck No, I'm fine. I'm just, I'm frazzled. I, all right. How, 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 I was about to call our caller Holy Kool Aid. I don't know why he's in my head. Um, because he I just featured his comment. Yes. I wait. Now IQ just dropped. Oh, wait. Here. Let's try that What's again. happening with the calls? I don't know. Maybe. IQ? Yeah. There we go. Cool. You Bring it on home for well, us. That was, that was interesting. It was, okay. You know, we're going to get to our last caller. <laughs> it's like, damn it. Let me call him right back. <laughs> Thank that you. All right. So, hello. Hello. See, we are talking about sex positivity here. Now, there's a lot that goes into sex. You know, it's, it's, you know, two people interacting. So relationships is a big thing. And typically when people are together, they're having sex. But it, it, it's real important. Your relationship with somebody. And the, when I say relationship, it's not always just, you know, the boyfriend, girlfriend, you're together thing. But it's how you're interacting with somebody else. That's your relationship. You know, I have a relationship with Ethan. We're friends. You know, no, it's, it's, it's the, the <laughs> mode that you're interacting with people. And it's, it's important to recognize your level of respect. 
expect with all of your relationships that it's not always the same across the board, right? It's honesty. You, you've covered a lot of this all already. You know, it's uh, you can be honest. Say what's on your mind. You know, if you're going out on dates, yeah, of course, if you haven't gotten laid in a while, you're going to be a little horny and you're going to be thinking about sex. But fellas, you got to learn how to put your dick in your pants. <laughs> don't do, think with your do dick not be a let more that thing term. control you you can be horny go fucking rub one out before the date so you can focus on the person all right it's not always just about sex you need to be able to establish a relationship with somebody if you're looking to get into a relationship look for the relationship yes of course sex is great you would love to get laid but if that's all you're thinking about you really need to reconsider your respect for this person and what you actually want from this person. Because if that's all you want, say that. Yes. I, I'm not looking for a relationship. You know, I, to, uh, to, yeah. you're getting into a kind of a red zone there to where you're just going out and look, I don't care about you. I just want to fuck you. You know, like and that's usually a turnoff for most people, unless there's an established, you know, benefit relationship already there, you know, right. well, I, I'm, I'm not interested in being together with somebody, but you're super hot. Let's sit down and you, know, you, you have to establish something. I, just, I can't wrap my head around just not caring about somebody's mental well-being or their emotional well-being to the point where you can say, shut up. Let's just fuck. Now that can happen. Uh, just a total strangers. Let's just not talk about anything. I don't even want to know your name. That you know, to each their own. But it's just that's that's not how I roll in my head. You know, um, see, I'm I'm at kind of a conflict in my head. Like I'm a total whore, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't like sleeping with a lot of people. I don't I think like the difference is, is being strangers. transparent with your with so with, it's like you're looking for. one person gets a lot of sexual energy <laughs> with me. <laughs> you have to be able to open up with that. You need to be able to say what you want, what your intentions are. You know how you like you know uh, say when you're horny. Say when you know I you know I've really got sex on my mind. Say you're on a date. Like you know I'm. I, I don't I don't want to put that on the on the front burner. Let's move past. Let's 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 talk about what's inside our heads, what's inside our hearts, you know, quote unquote. Get to know somebody. If you really want to be with somebody, get to know that person. And if your intentions you need to be able to be honest with yourself. That's that's the thing. I see yeah. thank you. I I I agree. And I think one thing that people seem to to forget at least what i'm seeing in the dating industry well one you can be totally honest so i i, I want to speak directly to the men here although maybe this advice could be for everyone i am uh, uh, a cisgender dude so i'm giving my advice to 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 men like that right now be honest like i have yet to have a situation where i've been open with a woman and said look hey i'm actually just interested in sex where they're like oh my god you're a pig like if you're honest from the get-go, you'd be surprised how often other people are receptive to it when you're just upfront with it. And additionally, yeah, just because you're horny you, doesn't make you a pig. Well, no, what right. makes you a pig is you're a fucking liar. Right. <laughs> Here, here's the other thing. Yeah. Let's say you are just into somebody like you. You just want to have sex and and, and nothing more. It's still important to remember that that person's a human being. So let's say they spend the night and you have sex. Even if it's just sex, still make them breakfast the next day. Like that doesn't mean you automatically want more. That just makes you a nice person or a decent person showing you care about them. So you can have yeah. just sex and still treat each other in a respectful manner. Yeah, yeah. here's a good phrase. Does anybody know how to fuck somebody responsibly anymore? <laughs> seriously okay be honest with somebody look you know this is 
what I want. Are you comfortable with this? Use your goddamn words. Yes. Communication. Yes. You know, use protection. Okay, IQ, real quick. I have Consider to say, their mental well-being. <laughs> I have to say one of my – the biggest red flag for me is if I'm going to be intimate with a woman and, and that woman says, you don't have to use protection with me. I'm on birth control. To me, that's immediate – nope. That is a red flag <laughs> right there because you know what? I – I like my my, 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 my my penis the way it is. I would like it to stay intact mm -hmm. and healthy and well, it's clean. not gonna fall off. Um, you know what I mean though, but like <laughs> and chances are that you're not the first person that they've said exactly. this to. Exactly. That's what and I'm thinking that's of. danger zone. Yes. Yeah, I guess. I walked into a store last week, had my mask on, teller didn't have their mask on, said Oh, uh, brother, you don't got to worry about wearing that in here. And I looked around. There's like, you know, a bunch of other people in there without masks on. I looked at him. Huh. All righty then. Turned around and walked right the fuck out. <laughs> no. <laughs> Looking at me like, the hell's wrong with this guy? Like, no. I'm it's not chopping and protect other people. Same thing with pussy. Because if, if you know, if they're not going to respect the well-being of everybody around them, why am I here? I actually, Why am I with you if you don't respect yourself enough to respect me, to respect anybody else that you've probably interacted with? Fuck that. I'm out. Well, here's what people, in my opinion, don't realize. Like before you sleep with somebody without protection, consider this. To me, you are essentially saying, hey, I trust, even though I don't know you, I trust you with my life. Because when you're trusting them with your life, you you basically know they're not going to give you an STD, which could be a lifelong one. Like, and maybe it's because my aunt paranoid me about STDs growing up. But like, do you like do you really want to get stuck with something and have to explain that to every partner going forward? Trigger warning. Oh yeah, sorry. Did I? <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no, you're good. Yeah, it's be responsible like you don't know mm -hmm. that person and to sleep with somebody random unprotected is so irresponsible it's reckless it's not about just about children it's about disease and i, I don't know yeah. if it's looked lately but std rates eh, kind of high yeah. yeah good and by the way, when somebody sorry, doesn't have the, that quick, respect for themselves, I am not, you know, it's just IQ real quick. Sorry. Turn off. I am not shaming anybody who has an STD. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you. I'm just saying that we need to be more responsible and wear protection to prevent further spread. Yeah. No, oh, I mean, that's like freaking COVID right now. Like, yeah. take care of yourself, take care of everyone else. And dude, we are so over time, IQ. Though, but I want to thank you for for. Oh no, it's in. all good. It was nice. To yeah, thanks you. for taking the call. <laughs> Already being over time, I appreciate it. No, I always love talking with you, IQ. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye bye. See ya. Um. Okay. Real quick, what I do want to talk about is the recovering uh, from religion fundraiser we put together. Um. Actually, I'll just real quick play this before we head out, or as a commercial break before. Mm -hmm. Wait. Or should I just play it at the end? No, play right now. Go for it. Oh, quick commercial break.
And yes, we have successfully put together the largest atheist stream that I've ever seen. Um, February 4th from 7 to 10 p.m. Hannah Vaughn and Brain Bug will be hosting along with Kenneth Leonard and Jenna Belk. Um, oh, and obviously myself. Um, and then Hannah Vaughn and I are here every Thursday at 9 p.m. where we cover sex, dating, relationships. Every Tuesday, I have a call-in show called The Perspective. This Tuesday will be hosted by Martin Robert and Brain Bug. It's at 7 p.m. Central Time. We tackle supernatural claims, conspiracy theories, and beliefs in aliens. And then every Sunday, youtube.com slash the Ethan and Jenna show. Jenna Belk and I do a show on mental health. Whew, that's all I got. Oh, sorry. Let me also thank our 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 the blah 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 our patrons. Jonathan Friedel, Cindy Plaza, Kenneth Leonard, Kathy Leto, Jump and Shoot, Ian Oz, Philip Leach. You all are awesome. Thank you so much for your uh generous patronage. Uh and you got anything else, Hannah? Thank you to the mods. Oh yes. Oh, I always love forget you guys. the mods. You always forget the mods. I love the mods. They're my favorite. They are great people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, everyone. We'll see you next week. Yep. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Oh, and oh. like and subscribe. <laughs>